Hey, everybody. Daniel Ramsey here. If you're watching us live, I'm really excited for you to be here. Uh, we're going to be talking today about what to say now, which is the recruitment edition. So my good friend, Dan Stewart here, happy grasshopper. Um, this whole world has shifted and we're specifically talking about recruiting remotely. And Dan is the expert at crafting messages and creating process around building really revenue. And in this edition, we're talking about building a talent pipeline. So it's a really cool talk. If you're getting here right now, I want you to go into the chat and just tell us the city you're in and what the temperature is outside. I want to know how hot it is uh, where you're at. And I really appreciate you guys sharing. Um, we're about to go live. So if you're here, you're a little bit early. Um, I love it. Just jump in the chat so we know where you're ca calling from and and what's it like where you're at. Dan, thank you for being here, by the way. Oh, gosh, you're so welcome, Daniel. Absolutely. Are you <laughs> kidding? This is great. Okay, so we got Brian. It's 94 degrees in good old Texas. It's always hot in Texas with big bugs, right, Brian? Um, Dan, so let's talk. Why did we start this? Why are we having this conversation? Why is this so important in your world? Um, and let's give everybody a little sense of your background so that they know why they should be listening to the stuff that you're about to, to share with us. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so first of all, uh, wherever it is you, you are right now, like in your individual personal business, uh, if, if you're not striving for something, right, if you're not trying to progress, um, it's kind of a, not a great place to be. So those of us who work in the real estate space, uh, we tend to go from being, you know, a solo agent at some point. Then you think about, well, ah, I've got more opportunity than I can handle. I need a team, right? And then yep. you go through the fits and starts of building a team. And then some people say, you know what? Uh, I, I really like helping people succeed. I'm going to open a brokerage, right? Or they yep. find themselves managing a brokerage. And all of a sudden they have a responsibility to attract even more people, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, their, their number one job becomes making sure that they've got enough people joining the brokerage for the brokerage to achieve its goals. So yep. in my career as an entrepreneur, recruitment has been responsible for literally all the success we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, because none of us succeed alone, right? That's one of my core beliefs. So if you're going to have a team, you may as well have the best team possible. And to Love do it. that, you have to have a strategic methodology for finding the right people, attracting them to your business, and then keeping them over the long term, right? So, mm. I mean, how simple is that framework, right? You've got no. to identify, attract, and retain. Pretty straightforward stuff. I love it. We've got uh, Matt O'Neill here from Charleston, South Carolina. What's up, Matt? Hey, um, how are he, you? He actually was um, voted the number one agent in his town. Uh, like the four years in a row. I just saw that on Facebook, a client, good friend of ours. Um, thanks for joining guys. Um, Dan, we were just talking, so it's about identifying, attracting and retaining, but there's a new kind of, kind of curveball in there. Now we're all virtual working from home, right? I'm here at my home. I'm your, at your home. <laughs> like, so hey, for, the world is shifting. Years, Daniel, for 10 years, we've had offices, right? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to my man cave. This is the detached garage at my horse farm, right? Yeah. So I, it's a new normal for a lot of us. We're, we're working virtually for the first time, right? And for others, it's, oh my gosh, this is so comfortable because they've been doing it and they've been doing it well for a long period of time. So, you know, if, if you are a broker now and you've got a traditional brick and mortar establishment, you're yep. seeing even less agents attend that facility, right? They're not coming to the office like they used to. So you have to have a strategy for engaging them in ongoing regular conversation or they're going to mm -hmm. drift, right? They're going to they're gonna all of a sudden recognize that maybe they need to be somewhere else. Uh, so you've mm -hmm. got to make your agents invisible to your competition. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to do that as well. So, well, and I to think answer your question, this is the reason why, right? It's this time of change. We've got to yep. respond to it. Yeah. Well, and I think in the absence of value, price becomes the only thing. So um, today, the value that we're going to bring is like how to recruit, 
in a remote environment. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. Um, Dan, you've got a slide deck. Let's let's dive in. We've given them enough kind of background. Your your business specifically helps people do what? Let's let's talk through that real quick and then jump into your slides. Okay. Well, at Happy Grasshopper, we help people who are in real estate win. Okay. So if you're a yep. solo agent, we can help you generate new leads now and an ongoing basis from the people who are already in your database. Uh, if you're a broker, we can help you attract and retain uh, the mm -hmm. right clients. And, you know, if you're a, the owner of say an independent brokerage, uh, yep. we can actually provide white label versions of our technology that uh, is branded with your name, your colors. It looks like your product. And that's a great strategy to help retain and hold on to those agents. So, and your guys' sweet spot is actually crafting the message. That's what's important here is that, yeah. and I think the reason we had you here is that a lot of us know how to kind of sell our service or our product. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about a talent kind of conversation, those, those conversations are yeah, different. Definitely. Yeah, just talk about that. Okay, so, you know, I think the right lead into that is let's just, let's take a deep breath. Can everybody do that right now? Just one <laughs> giant big deep breath. Okay. All right. I now just let did. it out. Okay. We've got to get comfortable with the fact that no matter who we are and no matter what we do, there's always someone else that our clients can choose to do that thing with. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you were in my business, if you own Happy Grasshopper, you have to now recognize that Samsung makes a refrigerator that will send you a text and let you know you're out of milk. I mean, like sending a message in 2020 is not a challenge for anyone. It's not. Mm -hmm. The challenge is figuring out what to say, right? That's the real hard part. So that's what this session is really all about. We're going to go through a process together uh, over the next half an hour or so that's going to give you the answers to all those questions so you know what to say to attract the right people specifically for you. So, you know, that being said, let's go ahead. I'm going to open my screen share here now. And let's roll. Uh, Daniel, if you don't mind, I'm going to drive here for a bit, my man. How's that sound? I love it. Let's do it. So now I need you to do me a favor though, everybody. Uh, the way to get the most out of this session is to be engaged and involved. Like, I want you to be asking questions. I want you to interrupt me, okay? So, Daniel, I'm going to need your help there because when my screen share is on, I can't see the chat that's open. Yeah, and I'm going to – I'm Jeff, definitely going to jump in. Um, Isla said she's so excited. I'm feeling lucky to be here live. woo -hoo. Uh, I love that. Um, I know Matt – um, does the whole talent thing at a high level. Brian's here to learn too. So if you're here right now, the only way to actually get value is to pick Dan's brain. And he's an expert at what he does. What to say now is the thing that everybody's got on our mind. I, you know, one of the challenges that we're all like, as an owner, are we going to go back to an office? Are we going to talk to our employees about what it looks like to come back? And how do we get somebody to move when they've just had this trauma? of their business going down and then right straight back up. So this is a really profound conversation and Dan is the expert at it. So um, the only way to get value is to kind of interact. So let's do that. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Dan. So um, there's a little bit of my background on the screen, right? This is not about me. It's more about what I've learned that can help you. Uh, so the reason this information is there is because I know for certain that the internet is full of people who are just talking and don't have any experience in actually being able to create results. So I want you to know that everything I'm sharing with you, it's because of some things I've learned in my career as a serial entrepreneur. So, you know, I come to every meeting I ever attend with some goals. I, I would encourage you to just recognize that the person in whatever interaction you're in that's more certain about what they want is the person who's going to get it. Okay. Mm. That's like tweetable. You should write that shit down. If you're more certain about what you want than the other party on the other side, you're most likely going to get it. Okay. Mm. So today I'm coming here to help you understand what recruitment really is. I'm going to help you understand the strategies for the type of recruiter that you really need to be. And I'm going to show you how to put those strategies to work as well as steer you away from some of the stuff that can screw this all up for you along the way. So uh, where we have to start is a pretty simple, basic place. And that's with questions. 
Okay, we're gonna just like, huh, marvel at the simplicity of this, okay? Because we all have the same amount of time, right? Plus or minus a few dollars, we all have about the same amount of resources, right? Uh, so the place that we start that really gives us the edge over our competition is by asking the right questions. And, you know, you should know this isn't just me saying this, right? This is guys much smarter than I am uh, who know to teach this. Uh, I love this quote, you know, uh, this is, this is uh, Albert Einstein, right? I mean, not a dumb dude. And he's essentially telling us that when his life's on the line, he's going to take his time to slow down and think about the right questions before he just sets about having the, the work, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Similarly, another quote I love is from Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he said that if he had eight hours to chop down a tree, he'd spend the first seven sharpening his axe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start out by asking ourselves some questions. And this is where I really want you guys to engage in the chat here. So let's start out by asking ourselves, what's the purpose of our prosperity? I mean, what are we doing this for? What are we going to do with it all? Where's it going to go? Why is it important for us to be successful? You have an answer, Dan? I mean, I'll put everything about, yeah, no, I love it. Everything about what we do is serving others. So um, one of our core values and the most important one to me is a servant's heart. So at my out desk, we serve our clients by providing high caliber talent so they can grow and scale their business. And so every time somebody asks me like, what am I doing in the world? How am I making impact? It has to do around finding talent for businesses and entrepreneurs to really grow and scale. Um, and then being able to take that kind of opportunity and help our people make impact in the world by doing charitable stuff. So that that's a hundred percent what we do. It's a big answer and it's important. Yeah. It's clear you spent <laughs> some time thinking about this sort of thing. Uh, I think if we boil it down to the, like the very heart of it, it's yeah. the same answer for almost everybody, right? And that answer is to fund a meaningful life. That's the purpose of our prosperity. It doesn't do us any good to earn millions of dollars if we can't enjoy our life despite that opportunity, right? So the, the next question obviously is, well, what's meaningful? And the really good news here is that that's up to each of us. That's always gonna be up to each of us, right? So what I, I need to share with you now is the way to go from wherever you are to where you're achieving a specific goal. So um, here's what I'd like you to do, guys. Let's go ahead and set a goal together. And just imagine this big giant goal. We'll put that where the metal is in the upper right of the screen there. Um, so I want you guys to call it out in the chat. Who's got a giant goal? Maybe it's number of agents recruited. Maybe it's a uh, number of agents you're gonna add over a specific period of time. Maybe it's a GDI goal, a number of transactions. It can be anything, right? A weight loss goal, a dollar <laughs> saved goal. You can put any single thing you'd like to put in there, right? All right, so Matt O'Neill, <laughs> 400 million sold by 2020. <laughs> 2022, sorry, I love that. So you just need one $400 million, $400 million sale over the next couple of years, no problem. One, one uh, island, right? <laughs> Talk to my buddy, Jan Kuha. He's a financial advisor in Charleston. He knows people who need to live in $400 million homes. He can help you. There you so, go. Uh, that's actually a pretty good illustration here, right? So we'll take that goal. We'll take Matt's goal, $400 million sold by 2022. So what's the immediate thing that has to happen before that? Sales. <laughs> like he can't get to that total unless he's making sales along the way, right? Mm -hmm. So where does sales come from? people okay. opportunities hey, I, I can see your i can see your screen you're you're i'm cheating because i can see oh, your, everybody seeing that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <That's so> funny. <laughs> you gotta switch screens brother <laughs> all right you're giving us well, the well, questions well. and the answers no to problem, the test man. i'll walk you through i'll make it as simple as possible so yep. if we follow this ladder all the way to the ground it starts at questions Okay, so we began today by asking ourselves questions internally mm. uh, to, to have conversations with people who can help Matt achieve his goal. He has to ask questions of other people, right? 
And then what happens inside conversations is that we actually build relationships. That's hmm. an absolutely critical thing to understand. If you're not having a conversation with someone, you're not in a relationship with them, right? So like, let's own the fact that your CRM that you're subscribing to, its sole purpose is to create conversations for you because those mm. conversations deepen relationships, relationships lead to better opportunities, opportunities lead to sales, sales leads to the achievement of your goal, right? Mm. So when we talk about what to say now, we're always gonna talk about where to start with questions, okay? And you know, for what it's worth, like I'd like to share just a little bit of my own personal story. Um, I just turned 50, like, damn, that seems like an eye blink ago. I was 20 and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. uh, 25 years ago, my girlfriend says, Hey, guess what? We're having a baby. Like, nice. wow. Right. And so I did what so many people do. I sought out a career in sales because I needed income and it didn't really matter how I got it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't going to break the law or do anything too stupid, but I didn't grow up saying, oh, I want to sell stuff for a living. And right. what I discovered uh, in the pursuit of an income is that, you know, people who enter a sales career, they're really entering a personal development plan. Like you cannot mm -hmm. be great at sales until you get really good at working on yourself. Uh, there are few exceptions to that rule. I really believe that. And I believe sales professionals are some of the best people in the world. So, you know, if I can go from being like a, a waiter, bartender, dude with a pregnant girlfriend at age 25 to a guy who's created multiple multi-million dollar companies, like everything is possible, sincerely, no matter who you are, or what you're doing right now. If I can do what I've done, you can certainly achieve what you want to achieve. So, you know, I say all this not to impress you and, you know, I show you this picture not to impress you but to impress upon you that really nothing is past you. And this is my horse farm here in Tampa. I am in this building right now. That's where I nice. am. Uh, you're seeing this broadcast. So, you know, back to the whole no BS stuff, right? There are a lot of people on the internet selling stuff. I've actually done what I'm teaching you to do today. So uh, now we're going to we dig in. A, hold on. We just did a um, blog post. Beware of false prophets like literally last week and be, based on a conversation that you and i had when we were setting up this call we were talking about it these fake guys on social media who's never who've never done it but they have great marketing and what we're sharing today is the actual you know framework for actually building a sustainable business and that's the you know beware of those false prophets so yeah i just i'm glad you're here i'm excited to dive into it I'm really wondering what this whole question, conversation, relationship, opportunity, sales thing. I'm, I want to get into that because so I'm, like, like, <laughs> I'm like thinking. I'm like, how do I incorporate questions into our hiring process? And anyways, keep going. I love this stuff. Yeah, I'll show you how to get there. So the, the first thing we have to do is what, recognize what recruitment really is. Okay? It's a yep. process of exit and arrival. All sales is the process of exit and arrival. Okay, so I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I drive a 2014 Subaru and I love mm. it. It's the best mm. car I've ever had, right? I mean, I don't think about getting another car ever. So all the ads that are fired, I'm not susceptible to them. And then recently, I had to pick up a friend at the airport, you know, someone mm. that friends with but i kind of wanted to impress a little bit right yeah. yeah i can't bring my house with me to the airport right <laughs> and so i had a moment of i might need a new car right ah like i love this car but you know i was fine there absolutely fine with that car until something occurs and then i'm no longer there right mm -hmm. so that moment that's a signal from the universe that we're all receiving that tells us when it's time to change something. And mm. you know, some of us listen to those uh, signals a little more loudly than others. Uh, some of us have the discipline to say, nope, I love my car, I'm not gonna let what other people think uh, impact me, right? So the point here is that there are agents in your marketplace right now who are super happy where they are 
and won't even consider being recruited by you until they receive that signal from the universe. Okay? You can't rush that. That's going to mm. occur in their time. What you can do is build a relationship with them until such a time as they're ready. Okay. So here's mm -hmm. a huge mistake I see a lot of uh, brokers make when they're trying to recruit is they just send messaging that's all about them. It's about their model. Yeah. It's about how much you could earn if you join them. Yeah. And I'm not susceptible to a new car right now. That doesn't do me any good, right? It would be much better for that broker to build a relationship with me so that when I am ready, uh, they're the person that I'm thinking of. Okay. But the thing, I think the challenge is that that's a lot of hard work. What you're mm -hmm. talking about, like that, I mean, building relationships when they're not really ready to move. Like, I think the thing that stops people from doing that is, you know, they don't see an immediate return. We're going to make that part easy. I promise. So, okay. So I, I have to do just a little bit more teaching here or the good stuff will make absolutely no sense. Okay. Okay. So I hear Go. you, Daniel. I'm going to get to like showing you exactly how it works. Okay. But I've got to show you some other stuff here first because, you know, I'm not the person who invented the idea that we should talk to people and build relationships with them before we sell stuff to them. Right. That's really simple. And right. When we're talking about building a relationship over time, we have to understand that all of us are exposed to the same sorts of things over time. Plato wrote about this, okay? There's, there's something called the hero's journey that uh, mm. is so astute. It's so smart when you consider how you're gonna communicate with people over time. Okay, so I'm gonna break this down and since I'm a Star Wars fan, we're gonna use Star Wars as an example. Uh, we've got Luke here, right? You've seen Star Wars, Daniel, I presume, right? Everything, yeah. Uh, of course, right? So, so we've got Luke who's on his sand planet. He's a moisture farmer. He doesn't love being there, right? He's received a signal from the universe. He wants to do something else, but he doesn't have a way to get there, right? He doesn't have a way to access this new special world that he wants to be part of until something very important happens. And that's called the meeting with the mentor, right? So you have a decision to make when you're recruiting people, right? Are you gonna be the hero of the story or are you gonna be the guide, the mentor that gives the person you're trying to recruit access to that new special world, right? There's, there's a distinct choice that has to be made there. And uh, from my perspective, there's no mystery here. Like you are the guide, period. Uh, if I'm happy at the brokerage I'm at, uh, the only reason I'm going to think of leaving is because I think I've got a better chance of achieving my goals with you than I do where I currently am, right? You have to be the person who gives me access to this new special world that I want to be part of. So, you know, we're going to break this down just a little bit further, right? Because we've got two recruiting styles. You've got the Obi-Wan style. Uh, this is the person who recruited Luke, so to speak, and then departs from the story. Okay, They show up and then they're gone. And uh, a lot of my friends over at EXP are Obi-Wan style recruiters. Right? They're right. recruiting for the model. Get you in the fold. You're in my downline and now I'm moving on to the next one. You know, that's a lot different than joining a team or working at a brokerage where you're tucked under the wing of someone who's going to actually guide you, you know, and, and we'll contrast that with Luke, who's more like the, uh, the small independent broker, right? Luke is looking for people to go to battle with, right? Mm -hmm. He's looking to add people to his team where they're going to stay on mission together, right? It's a different approach. So, you know, if you're an Obi-Wan style recruiter, that's fine, but just know that that's what you are. And, and if you're you know, going to be on mission with them, that's great too. You just have to know because having mixed signals here and sending a mixed message, it means that you just don't make the progress you'd like to make. So mm. does that make sense, Daniel? You following that all right? Yeah, I'm in the process right now of recruiting somebody and uh, she was actually recruited to an Obi-Wan kind of style of business. And I'm definitely much more of a Luke style like we're going to go together and we're going to go far and this is going to be fun you know so i absolutely get it and um i 
I didn't know that it mattered to have the two distinctions until you just taught this piece of it. Yeah. See, a lot of, a lot of people make a mistake. Like if you're that, I mean, put yourself in the, the mindset of that small independent broker. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, every day you have people popping up who are saying, I'll charge you less fees. Right. Right. Or I'll have more leads or, you know, I'm with a national brand uh, or I've got uh, a downline that will make you a multimillionaire. Right. I mean, whatever those stories are, those are all things that you have to compete against and your relationship with them, you know, as a Luke in their life is what's going to make them invisible is going to make those other brokers invisible to your agents, right? It's the Mm -hmm. quality of that relationship that you have. So, you know, like the old saw with recruitment is you've got to recruit and you've got to retain. Uh, You guys all know that the the place you struggle is what it's an understanding exactly what you need to do in order to recruit and in order to retain. So this is where we're going to walk you through the process that will do that. So it's time to buckle up and actually do some work. A lot of webinars, you just sit there, it's passive. And then somebody's trying to sell you something at the end. (laughs) The only thing I'm trying to sell you is on a process that you can implement yourselves and get results with. So I want you to use this, Uh, whether you ever work with me or not is besides the point. So we're going to start with four critical questions. Okay. And the the first question that you've really got to identify is who? Right now, as a serial entrepreneur, we always look at this as a customer avatar. Like, Mm -hmm. what does this person think? What are they worried about? Like when they're trying to go to bed at night, what's that conversation they're having with themselves? Uh, When they're driving down the road, you know, what's that internal conversation that that's going on in their brain? We want to try to understand just as much about who it is you're trying to attract as possible before we start sending a message to them. So for example, let's say I run a really tech forward brokerage. Mm -hmm. We're cutting edge. We've got, you know, every uh, bell and whistle, every shiny object. We really need people who are familiar with and fluent with technology and can leverage it. Like that's what we're looking for. Well, if I send that message to a bunch of people whose hair matches mine, Uh, that aren't comfortable with technology, like I can have the best message in the world, but if I'm sending it to the wrong people, it it won't do its job for you, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are absolutely certain of who the right fit is for your brokerage, uh, that gives you uh, something that's really valuable and that's unshakable confidence, right? The reason that I want you to go through that process of knowing who is so when the wrong person shows up, you can point towards the door. Uh, You don't want to bring the wrong person in and upset your culture and be more of a problem than they're worth. uh, You know, I'll I'll tell you as um, a guy who once uh, ran a contracting company where, you know, one contract we could take in would be what we might focus on for two years. Uh, Oftentimes the very best contracts we ever had were the ones we avoided. Right. So, you know, there's a lot to be said about knowing who uh, you want, because that unshakable confidence lets you push the wrong people away and it lets you pull the right people towards you much more quickly. Right. Because yep. when you know that they're right, they're going to sense that certainty within you. and It's going to be attractive to them. So uh, super, super important to do that. And uh, then, of course, we'll move from that into where we actually need to be to find these people. So Mm. this is, uh, you know, if you think of it like a a military campaign, like every general is going to assess the terrain in which the battle takes place, right? Right. So, you know, this, this is actual physical terrain in many cases. And in other cases, it's virtual terrain. So... Mm. I have a lot of clients who are recruiting nationally or internationally. Uh, Mm -hmm. There really isn't a geographical restriction where they want to get these people. Sometimes it's a psychological terrain. You know, we we want people who uh, believe some things or who are certain of some things. And we'll use that terrain match to get these people. So what I think I want to just point here because and ask you a question, is this uh, also a market timing? Because I think we're in a really 
unique time frame in our history where, you know, 15, 20% unemployment, there are some talent out there that if you're an entrepreneur who has a big $400 million sales goal, now's the time to pull those guys into your world. So I'm curious if Terrain also kind of uh, talks about market timing. Well, uh, no, that's really more in the messaging. So okay. here's something I believe in teach. Like we all have some things about our businesses, about ourselves even that are mm -hmm. unchanged. Like they're constant, like it's our spine, it's our foundation. No matter what the market does, those things are still going to be true, right? Right. So we need a plan that communicates those things effectively over time, no matter what. And then we have to supplement that communication chain with things that are happening now. So okay. uh, none of us can predict what's going to happen a week from now, a month from now, three months from now. So mm -hmm. we have to expect to be able to plug in the right content as part of our communication train. So uh, to me, a market condition would be something that gets handled then rather than something that's a core foundational element of our communication plan. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So uh, when we talk about terrain, it's really about figuring out where to go get people. Okay. So we'll use Obi-Wan here as an example. Okay, when he was looking for his Luke, where was he? he? You know, he wasn't hanging out at the bar, right? He was mm -hmm. in a place where someone might need to be rescued from something, okay? So there's a lesson here because if you can build a relationship with someone, if you can start that process by giving them a solution to something that really bothers them, wow, that bonds you. I mean, that, they're, they're like always going to think highly of you. It sets you in a much greater position right from the start. Right. Effective sales, effective recruitment, it has a lot to do with positioning. So that's the reason that we look for things that they're struggling with that we can rescue them from. And, um, and then of course, once we've shown up and we're rescuing them from that, we have to have a plan to take them somewhere, Okay. So let's, let's break this down. We'll use some real world examples here. Yep. Um, like uh, think of something recently here. I have some friends at uh, HAR, Houston Association of Realtors. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently there was uh, a COVID amendment that was created and added to contracts. And that yep. created a heck of a lot of questions. Like, what do we do with our contracts that are already pended? Like, what, what does this really mean? How do we respond if this, then that? Like, yeah. ooh, it was a new thing that created a lot of issues for people. So that's the sort of thing that you can recognize and you can start conversations about, okay? So um, I would just encourage you guys to like take a moment and think about what are the things that are agents in your market are struggling with? Those are things you can rescue them from. Where's their pain? Uh, you can go greet them at their pain and you'll be ready to take them in a better position. So I love it. Um, when it comes to terrain, there's another component here that that's important to discuss because we've got all sorts of different ways that you can uh, meet people, right? I mean, some of you might advertise. Uh, if you've got a job advertisement out there and people are replying to it, that's certainly one way that you can recruit people. Uh, a lot of our clients in the real estate space, uh, they generate lists. Uh, you know, you can pull them from your association, from the board, from the MLS. You can pull them from tools like broker metrics or the showing time broker tools. Uh, right. And I actually, I'm a huge advocate for this, right? Because, you know, if, if I have done the work to say, I know I can help an agent who's doing between three and five million a year get to seven to 10 million, using a tool like Broker Metrics or the Show and Time Broker Tools to pull a list of agents who are currently performing in that band, that gives me uh, you know, a, a great start in uh, pursuing a relationship with them, right? So yeah. the more we know about the person who's gonna be reading our messaging, the better job we can do at creating a conversation with them. Okay? Sure. So I want you to imagine that you're this broker You've pulled a list of people and now it's time to communicate with them. Uh, here's a mistake that a lot of brokers will make. Uh, they'll, they'll build a HTML email that 
argues for why their brokerage is the best. And it'll say something like, we're now, uh, we've got room for more agents. Like, yeah, yeah. if you're interested in making a change, come join us, right? And that's the sort of message that may work if you just happen to get it in front of someone who's ready to make a change. Um, those are really small odds. And I don't like to play the small odds. I like to win. So uh, the way that we're going to win is we're going to start a conversation with that person that's going to build a relationship that is going to make sure they come and join us when it's time. Okay. So instead of trying to just patch a band aid and get people to join us today, we're going to build a system that makes sure we can attract the right people over time such that we can achieve any sort of recruitment goal. And uh, I'll show you some examples here where we've actually helped agents and brokerages do that. Okay. Um, before we do that, though, I, I do want to really drive home a point about when you have a list here. Uh, you have to have a strategy for first contact. Okay? Mm -hmm. so I told you what's wrong, that HTML email about why your brokerage is great. Don't start right. there. Uh, the right approach would be to ask them a question. Just engage them in conversation. So, you know, Daniel, if you're on my list of people that I might recruit because of your performance, I have some options here, right? I can, uh, I can congratulate you. That's a really good thing to do. Like here's mm -hmm. three common things that you can reach out and start a conversation about. Uh, yep. Once you know what their status is, you can congratulate them about that. You can uh, mention that, you know, hey, there's this change that's taking place. I'm curious what your thoughts are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can grad congratulate people who are already with you. Uh, and this is a huge thing to do for retention. Let's yeah. imagine that agent in your office who's been in the business for two years. They've only closed three transactions. They're, you know, kind of in, kind of out, but they've recently made a commitment to make this their career and they just got four deals under contract. Like, wow, you can tell that story in a message. You can lift them up to their peers in the community. Send a, you know, please join me in congratulating Daniel. I'm so proud of the work he's done. I know he's gonna have a great career here. And I mean, isn't it amazing to know that two years in, he was almost uh, out of the business and now he's got four deals that are pended. So proud yeah. of him, that's awesome. Like that makes him feel fantastic and it makes the person reading that go, what did they do to get four deals pended? Like, hmm, I wonder if I'm at the right place, right? So that's a strategy to start a conversation with someone who has no idea who you are. Then, of course, you have to have a strategy to keep that conversation going. And for that, you need a blueprint, right? You need a mapped out plan of what's going to be said to whom, when. That's the purpose of building this communication plan for people you're trying to recruit so that you can just start people on the plan and you know that it's going to run through the steps with them over time. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you do this, when you put these sort of things in place, the goal here is not for people to like come back to your website and fill out a form. The goal is for those people to pick up a call, pick up a phone and call you, right? We mm -hmm. want them to schedule an appointment with you. We right. want them to attend a career night. Like you've got to have a clear understanding of what the goal is. And then uh, we of course can build the messaging to create that. So hmm. this blueprint looks mm -hmm. really, really um, detailed. And I feel like this might be some of the best value in the conversation because most brokerages, most businesses don't have a mapped out plan for their communication strategy when it comes to talent. They kind of half-ass put something together the night before the email is supposed yeah. to go out. You know what I mean? Oh my so, God, somebody just left. We got to recruit. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, we've gone through incredible growth and I have more leads than I know what to do with and my internal staff is busy. That's probably my story, actually. Um, so, uh, we have a... Um, are, are you willing to give that blueprint away to this group? Because that's we, we have a question. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're here to help, right? Uh, yep. Daniel said at the beginning, his highest value is service. Okay. Yes. I mean, not only do we have the same name, my brother, right? But, 
Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, we'll give that away. And we'll give our time away too. I mean, we're going to create a lot of questions here. We're starting mm-hmm. you on a process. If you need help getting to the end of the process, just book a tour with us. You know, we'll yeah. have one of our coaches go through and solve these problems with you for your specific situation. Yep. So, what we'll do is we'll put a link to getting the recruitment blueprint in the Facebook group. So if you're live with us right now, you'll just have to jump on the My Outdesk Facebook or book a consultation with Happy Grasshopper. But we'll get this to you um, one way or another. Sweet. Uh, thank you for that, Daniel. Um, I'm going to break down this blueprint here in a bit more detail for you because there's, there's a few components here that are really important. You've got your data, right? Yep. Who you're going who you're going after, you've got to have the list there. Uh, And then you've got to have that communication plan. So we're breaking this into initial messaging and then some positioning content. And then that's followed with long-term nurturing content. So we've got your initial message. These two blocks are ongoing positioning and then long-term nurturing. So let's Mm. talk about what the goals are here. In an initial message, you've got to change the content according to how you're meeting this person. If there's someone who already knows you, it's a different message than if they're a total stranger, right? If they come to your career night, it's a different message. Uh, If they've just, you know, got their license and they don't even have a broker yet, it's a different message. So the, the way you're starting here is really important. And then there's some core things about you that don't change. These are Mm -hmm. the things you believe in, right? This is where you're telling your story you're arguing for things you believe in. You're planting your flag in the ground and saying, these are the things I would defend. And mm. what you'll find is that when you're sharing these things the right way, uh, it works like a magnet. It attracts the right people to you, the people who have that same belief or who uh, will see you as someone who's uh, aspirational, someone they would like to be like. Okay? I got to slow you down here because I think this is probably the most important defining piece of the conversation how do you help people who are just because we're all high d's and high i's we're driven by you know how do i make more money how do i build a bigger business or how do i help more people right like that's kind of our and you saw you know in the beginning how do you help somebody talk about their flag and really craft that what what does that look like what's that process look like that's a really smart question because you know i might be really great you know, and the moment I start to write how great I am, I feel like a total tool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We all have that kind of blind spot. It's really hard to write about what we love about ourselves because mm-hmm. who wants to even say that as a sentence? It's just, it's awkward and nasty. So what has to really take place is a transfer of knowledge from people who are already with you to people who might choose to be with you. So we need to find out what it is that agents who are with you love about being with you and then Mm. tell those stories. That's what needs to take place in the positioning area. So uh, very similar uh, to the way we would advise a client to convert more internet leads. Right. Let's communicate to that lead what your past clients love about you. That's a lot different than you know, I, I'm a true professional, a great negotiator, and I really care. I'll treat you like mm. family. That doesn't go very far. That's, those are platitudes. If right. you want to really make the impact, you've got to tell a story, right? So, you know, recently there was an agent in my office who was struggling, and they said this and that. Use that as an example to tell them that you really provide a lot of great training. Don't right. just say you provide great training. Give examples and then show them how that great training has improved the life of people who are already with you. Uh, that's what makes a difference. It's so interesting because there's so many parallels to generating just regular business leads and generating, you know, talent leads. There's just such a great parallel. And when you make that mind shift, I think, you know, it becomes easier. Yeah. It's, I mean, if we're all walking around in the same flesh, right? Uh, we're people at the end of the day. And as people, if we're asked questions, we'll generally respond, right? That's a great way to engage us in conversation. So whether we're trying to convert an internet lead to get a a home sold, or we're trying to uh, get an agent away from where they are to join us, uh, asking them the right questions is the first step because that leads to the conversation. 
which leads to the relationship, which leads to the opportunity, which leads to the sale, right? Yeah. So we'll build that ladder for you again. Um, now here at the bottom, you see capture reply. Like the whole thing that we're trying to do here in the positioning phase is start that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, it's going to go in different directions. But the goal is always to set that initial meeting. It all traces back to that. So, you know, what I'm an expert at is building content that starts conversations. Uh, yeah. I will never build an AI chatbot to have the conversation for you because there's no one who's more equipped to do that than you are. Right? Right. You have to show up to do that part. I love it. Guys, we're, we're um, about five, 10 minutes away from wrapping up. There, this, there's a lot of opportunity to ask questions around this conversation. We've got Dan here. Um, let, let's keep going, but I want to just poke. We only have five minutes left with this brilliant man. So let's use his talent. And if you have a question, throw it in the chat or in the Facebook live post and we'll get it to him. Um, Dan, what's, what, what should we cover next in the next five, 10 minutes? I think I need to show you guys some examples. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about some case studies here. Uh, I have a client named Allison Gaddy. She's in Austin, Texas, and uh, she's with EXP, right? So mm -hmm. you'll see her recruitment style. She's an Obi-Wan, okay? Mm -hmm. Her mission, the thing this is all about is personal freedom, right? Now, we've done a heck of a job helping her recruit people, and we've been able to do that because we're able to understand what it is she's actually doing herself and how that story is compelling to people that she's attracting. So yep. I'll, I'll give you a little bit more detail here. She's not out for just everybody. She's not interested in attracting everybody. She's narrowed her focus to where she wants people that are at high producing teams. She wants to bring the whole team over, not just mm. an agent here or there. Right. So it's, it's a really interesting approach. Uh, next example I'll give, this is one of my favorites, uh, mm -hmm. Live Real Estate. They're in Edmonton, Canada. Uh, and this is Sarah and Sheldon. They're the principals there. And I promise you that if you met these guys and hung out with them, you'd be like, I could live in Canada. I could do that. <laughs> and they're that awesome, right? That you just want to like really consider moving to Canada just to work yeah. with them. Yep. And uh, and what we did with them was really neat because uh, they're definitely Luke style. Like they're looking for people they can go into battle with, right? And what they're out for is helping you achieve your lifestyle goals. Like mm -hmm. they've built a real culture that's super cool. This is their office. Uh, it's the kind of place where you could just like hang out and shoot pool, but the culture there doesn't let that happen. Like this is where you celebrate something it's not where you just show up and hang out. Mm. Um, they've, they've got a very high producing office culture there. And um, because they're so good, like they've got this great reputation, they generate a ton of leads. Uh, it was really easy to help them achieve their goals. We, had, we met their annual recruitment goal in just two months, uh, mm. which was really fun. And now I'll just, I'll show you one more here to give you guys an idea of the, the way things can scale differently. Uh, sure. There's a brokerage we serve in Northern Virginia called Pearson Smith. Uh, Eric Pearson's one of the principals there. And uh, they have a really neat model, right? Because it's a hybrid. So you can, you could be a hundred percent commission with them, or you could be like 50, 50 where they're holding your hand and helping you through every single thing. So mm. they, they joined us back in 2013 and they actually wow. use happy grasshopper, not just for recruitment, but every agent, when you join Pearson Smith, you get a happy grasshopper account. So, okay. you know, the, the reason I bring that up is because we've talked so much about the recruitment side. We haven't talked a lot about the retention side. So mm. one of the things I love to do is provide a broker, a tool that's branded for them that the agent can't get anywhere else. Right. So that that really helps them uh, hang on to people over time. So what is I'm, the what is the technology part of the recruitment process in your mind? And I think I think we need to wrap up with probably answering that question and also how to get a hold of you. Um, mm -hmm. And 
if you're listening, we want to give away a book. So we've, we've got our free book that I always give away every single time we do one of these things. If you're interested in scaling your business, we, with virtual professionals, our virtual assistants, you can just text, um, SVP. So Sam, Victor, Paul to three, one, nine, nine, six. Um, and it's a really cool book, right, Dan? No, I'm just, I, I, love, I love it. Um, but here's the point. If you're thinking about hiring or leverage or you, you want to hire a virtual assistant, it's 120 pages, the easiest read in the world. And it'll give you every single thing you need to know about actually getting a virtual assistant. That's what we do here at My Outdesk. But let's end with the technology piece of the recruitment process because Happy Grasshopper is actually a platform a communication platform. And that's what's really, we want to make sure that everybody realizes if you took everything that you learned today with, from Dan, you'd still need somehow to deliver those messages out. So I think that's a good spot to kind of wrap yeah. us up and then go. I mean, having, having the content is great. That's wonderful. Yep. What you really need is a way to send the content that uh, is multi-touch and multi-channel. So yep. You know, the system that we built sends email, voicemail drops, text messaging, and we even write and deliver handwritten cards. So, you know, for every segment of the database, whether it's recruitment or lead conversion or your past clients in Sphere, every yep. contact should have a communication plan. And, right. you know, so like I might catch a lead and respond via text immediately, follow it with a voicemail drop, follow it with an email. Uh, I might have a personal meeting with someone and send a handwritten card out automatically just right from our system where it's right. totally hands off and all you have to do is collect the replies uh, and have those conversations. So I see a question from Diane here. Uh, yeah. Since we're talking about encouraging people through culture and your example is workplace, how would that work now that most people are working remotely or from home? I love it. That's great. So I mean, that's a great segue all the way back to the beginning here because this is the big time of change, right? Yeah. So here we are on Zoom right now having this meeting. Now, mm -hmm. for 10 years, I've had a company-wide meeting every Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. Like everybody shows up, whether it's a virtual meeting, whether it's a physical face-to-face -face meeting, it doesn't really make that much difference, right? Zoom is great for having these sorts of shared open experiences. Um, I would strongly suggest that you consider having some water cooler type spaces within your technology where people can get together and hang out. Uh, mm -hmm. We use Slack for that at Happy Grasshopper. So, you know, yeah. every employee in the company has their Slack account. Um, we use Facebook groups for that. Like uh, we have a great Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash what to say now where uh, any agent or broker can go there and ask a question about how to word something or how to overcome a communication problem. And our writing staff gets in there and answers those questions. Um, and you know, the, the last thing, Diane, here that I really want to drive this point home with is that despite the fact that we're together physically less frequently, we're still human beings. We still have that need for connection. So we've got to leverage technology that lets us have that connection. Uh, we need to pick up the phone more frequently. We need to talk to people. We need to, you know, get to be expert at that two minute phone call. Hey, I've only got a couple minutes. Daniel just wanted to reach out and say, how are you, brother? <laughs> Good to hear yeah. your voice. Yeah, great yeah. click. <laughs> you know, it's like a little, 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 uh, you got to keep feeding the, the machine there. You got to put, keep putting your coins in that till important to do well it, diane brings up a good question i mean we we should talk a little bit about the recruiting virtually as mm -hmm. we wrap up um so what what do you feel besides more frequent conversation maybe in doing video zoom meetings in the recruitment process what have you had to change because you can't do a coffee or you can't you know have people come to your office what 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 have you changed in the process for for your clients well, so um, let's talk about the coffee meeting, right? Because I'm, I'm in Tampa, Florida right now, and I swear looking outside and walking around in the world, no one's heard of coronavirus. It's terrifying. Right. I mean, right. it's absolutely nuts. And, and I know from our member community, like some of you guys are super comfortable with that. Others are terrified of it. 
right? Right. So the first thing you're going to have to do is have your sensory acuity turned up to stun. Like you don't want to pressure that person who doesn't feel comfortable to meet you for coffee, right? You, you need to give them some latitude to have a voice in how you might get together. And, and it really gives you an opportunity to solve that problem together, right? Mm. So I'd love to have a chat with you about this, Daniel. Normally, I'd say, hey, let's just meet for coffee. But it's a new world. You know, what, what's convenient for you? How would you like to get together, right? Yeah. And then offer them a couple options. We can do FaceTime. We could do a Zoom call or we could meet in, at the park and maybe do a walk. I, one of my favorite things during this whole uh, time frame is I just have people meet at our office and then we go for a walk around the park and yeah. you keep that distance and you still get to have that closeness, you know, even though, you know, all of our 1200 people are fully remote working from their home, there's still that opportunity to get together and spend a little bit of time um, with people. Well, Dan, we're wrapping up. Uh Oh, we're not wrapping up. You had a point. I'm going to ask you a question, actually. I mean, okay. My outdesk, you guys have been virtual from day one. Like, I mean, this is no joke, right? Yeah. So there's probably no one better to answer those questions of how to create a sense of community for a remote workforce than you. Yeah. Like, and by the way, for what it's worth, guys, I am a My Outdesk customer, okay? So yeah. when we hired our folks through My Outdesk, we went through a process that involved a virtual interview. We scheduled the appointments. You know, I put them through some paces to make sure they could communicate in a way that was appropriate for our brand. Like, you you know exactly what to do in this situation. It's been your process for years, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we just move the, most people move the face-to-face -face interview at the end of the process. We just move it closer to the beginning. And that, I mean, I know that sounds weird, but we, when you're recruiting somebody and you're, vir you're fully virtual, meaning we've hired 6,000 people over 13 years, uh, what you want to do is you want to speed up that um, engagement. So in the talent acquisition world, which is a world that we're in, um, the speed to lead is still the biggest influence of success. And so for us, that speed to first conversation, that speed they apply to, we do an interview, that's the metric that, that determines success. And so we have, I mean, thousands and thousands of face-to-face -face interviews every single month. The thing, the reason we had you here is because your, your messaging is just so superb. It's like the, really the best in your process for getting them. And uh, the thing that we do is we're a fully remote company. So, Slack's a great tool. Zoom's a great tool. I love internal Facebook groups. Our, we're in there all the time. Doing li I'm doing a lot of live videos. Like once a week, I'm doing a live video for our team. Um, we have weekly meetings where we do breakout sessions. I mean, communicate, communicate, communicate is the, is the measure right now. And that includes it with your talent pool. Awesome. That's well, my thank answer. Thank you for reminding me, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Dude. man. It's been great. Always happy to help. So if there's anything I can ever do for you guys, don't be shy. Okay. So how, how does somebody, should we just go to happygrasshopper.com, the forward slash tour to get, to kind of go deeper if somebody wanted the process or some messaging or to see your technology? Is that the best way to do that? That's the best way to do it. So like, here's a core belief. This is why I'm asking you to go to that link. I'm not a believer in one size fits all messaging. Right. I mean, what, what works for an aggregate of our members is not going to be great for you. Right. Honestly, like we have to, we have to recognize that uh, the one size fits all content approach has been tried and it just doesn't work. I mean, look yep. at any CRM system. It's got stale content in it. That's so watered down. It's not right for anyone. Like it's instantly mm -hmm. ignored the minute it arrives anywhere. So mm -hmm. if we're going to cut through that clutter, we've got to do it by getting to know you and creating content unique to you. So uh, that's why I ask people to go to that link because the process starts by talking to one of our business coaches. You know, we can learn enough about you to figure out whether or not we can actually help you. That's important. <laughs> like if we can't, we don't yeah. want you. Uh, right. And, um, 
And then we can build that roadmap for you, build that communication plan, that blueprint that's going to produce the results that you're looking for. So there you go. All right, Dan Stewart, happy, happy grasshopper. Thanks for your time today. I really appreciate you. Um, if, if you stuck to the end, get a copy of our book, text 319 or SVP to 31996. You'll get a free electronic copy of Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. Dan, thanks again for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, Daniel. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.